What's up everybody, Mr. J here, and today at Organized Biology, we're going to go through glycolysis. This is the last video in this series of how we make ATP. So if you have not watched the other videos, please watch them. It's going to be the citric acid cycle, as well as the electron transport chain. I'm going to be referencing those videos in this one a lot because all of those processes are very important to what we're producing in this one. So let's get started, shall we? Glycolysis. First off, it's a process, and the goal of the process is to produce a few molecules. Primarily, though, two pyruvate molecules. You've learned in the last video for the citric acid cycle that pyruvate enters the citric acid cycle to produce a lot of molecules that help us make energy. Okay, so very important intermediates. In the same process of glycolysis, we're also going to make some ATP. We're also going to make some NADH, but I'm going to skip that for right now. Now, where is this occurring? This is different because in the last two videos, I've talked about how we're making energy, ATP, other things in the mitochondria themselves in the cell. So those organelles. But in this case, glycolysis actually occurs in the fluid within the cell, literally called the cytoplasm, which translates cell fluid. So this is just happening in the fluid of the cell. Very cool. And if a teacher asks, it is anaerobic. This is an anaerobic process, does not require any oxygen. So I'll show you. Glycolysis. So let's break this down quick. Glycolysis. Anytime you see the prefix gly or glue or glyco, this refers to some form of carbohydrate. You may have heard of these as basically just sugars, right? So we've got carbohydrate and then lice. If you lice something, it means to break or burst. So to break. So in this process, we are going to be breaking down carbohydrates. What specific carbohydrate? You may guess, glucose. Glucose is the monomer, the base unit of most carbohydrates, okay? We get it from our food, we digest the carbs, and we get glucose. Now, I want you to notice a couple things with glucose. Number one, it is shaped like a hexagon. So a lot of the times your teacher or the textbook's going to draw glucose as a hexagon, but what's actually in the hexagon is this. We have, I drew them in blue, six carbons arranged in this hexagonal ring. But I also want you to notice, look at how many other atoms are here, right? We've got some oxygens, we've got some hydrogens, and we've got bonds between all of these different atoms. Now in those bonds, there is stored energy. So I want you to think of all of these bonds as having some sort of stored potential energy that we are going to then convert into other intermediates that will then eventually transform it into the energy currency molecule, which is ATP. So that's later on though, so you can watch those videos. Now, let's get back to the beginning, glycolysis. So what's going into it? What are the ingredients? Well, simply put, the only thing we really need to start is glucose, okay? But at the same time, I'm also going to say this needs a little spark. This is called the energy investment phase. It's like we're lighting a little match to let the whole flame go. So we just got to have a little bit of input beforehand. And that's going to be in the form of ATP. Specifically, two ATP is going to kickstart this process, okay? Now, I'm going to simplify this a lot and just break it down very simply. In this process, there are over 10 enzymes which are basically little proteins that are catalyzing chemical reactions, making things occur. So therefore, there's 10 different intermediates. That is a lot of intermediates. If you want to know each and every one of the intermediates and the enzymes, you can watch a different video on glycolysis. I'm gonna keep it simple, and I think you appreciate that. So in this process, what I want you to know is we will produce two pyruvate molecules. Here we are. So what are pyruvate? Well, each one is a three carbon chain molecule. So we didn't get rid of any carbons in this case. Remember we started with, in glucose, we had six. So basically what we're doing is we're chopping this molecule in half to have a three carbon molecule and a three carbon molecule. Now it's not that simple, but that's, you get the picture. So we have two pyruvate. So we basically have one carbon chain there of three, and we'll have another one for the total of six. That'll go into the citric acid cycle in the mitochondrial matrix. We also produce a net of two ATP. So you might say, well, aren't these balanced? Well, no, technically in this process, we generated four ATP. I'm saying we net or total two ATP. 
And also in the process, we're also going to produce, like I said, the two NADH. And I'll draw that H in red because we know whoops, that H has some uh, energy that we're going to use later on in the process. So if I were to write this properly, we basically say, hey, ADP and some P's are going to come together, specifically four of them. We're going to net those two. And we'll also have two NAD. It's going to go into this process and net those two NADHs. Okay, and we're going to snag those H's from the glucose molecules themselves. So what's happening here? We're breaking down a sugar. We're producing the pyruvate. We'll go into the citric acid cycle. The ATP is going to be used up by the cell. NADH is going to go into the electron transport chain to make more ATP. So there's a lot of interplay between these intermediates. And I hope by this video and all the other videos uh, in the description below, and I've also linked a couple up on top, Hopefully you get a whole picture of this whole process known as aerobic cellular respiration. Hey, this is Mr. J. If this was helpful, please like the video. That'll help me to get this video to more people, make it simple to learn biology. And if it was helpful, please subscribe. I appreciate the support. Thanks for watching.